Good evening. Thank you all for coming tonight to the special edition of the Poem Jam. I'm John Smalley, a librarian at the uh, General Collections and Humanities Center on the third floor of this building, where we have tens of thousands of books of poetry in 41 languages. Stop by and visit sometime. Uh, most of you perhaps have already seen the exhibit that ties in with this program on the sixth floor in the Soaring Gallery, but if you haven't, uh, know that it will be up for a while, so please do stop by. I just want to mention uh, there is an American Indian Film Festival taking place at the Coret Theater across the hall for two more days. The, uh, and there are a few film programs on the table as well as library newsletters and flyers, coffee and cookies, so please help yourself to all of those wonderful things. I want to take a moment to acknowledge our community. So on behalf of the San Francisco Public Library, we wish to welcome you to the unceded ancestral homeland of the Ramatush Ohlone, who are the original inhabitants of the San Francisco Peninsula as the indigenous stewards. And in accordance with their traditions, the Ramatush Ohlone have never ceded, lost, nor forgotten their responsibilities as the caretakers of this place. As guests, we who reside and work here recognize that we benefit from living and working on their uh, homeland wish to pay our respects by acknowledging the ancestors, elders, and relatives of the Ramatush Ohlone, and by affirming their sovereign rights as First People. So without uh, further ado, I'm going to turn the microphone over to the guests of tonight's show. Please give a warm welcome for Kim Schock and Lisa Ruth Elliott. I'm in the slightly surreal circumstance of being the usual host for this event and also being tonight's guest, which I think I get to do every once in a while when something cool like this happens. Thank you all for being here. I'm going to let, um, we do this uh, on the second Thursday of every month, um, but it's not usually me. Um, <coughs> we have guests from all manner of, of uh, poetic expression um, and Lately, I've been featuring either uh, exigent political situations or um, um, anthologies. And that's what's going to happen next time. If you didn't see it, Colossus Freedom is our next event at Poem Jam. Check that out. Sarah Beale has been doing an incredible job putting these shows together, uh, or putting these anthologies together that feature um, communities that are severely impacted by certain political perspectives in this country, and they vary, but the last one is about incarceration. Now, I'm going to introduce Lisa Ruth Elliott. I'm sorry about the cough, and I know I'm not wearing a mask, but I need you to understand I have tested, I do not have the crud, and I will put a mask back on after I finish reading. Um, I'm gonna introduce you to Lisa Ruth Elliott, who is my uh, compatriot in this project. Um, which was graciously funded by the San Francisco Arts Commission. So thank you to San Francisco for that. Um, Lisa Ruth Elliott. Hi. Thanks for coming out on a Thursday when it's getting darker earlier and it feels like no one wants to leave the house in this cold. Um, we hope that you will enjoy the taste you get of the words and images that we have for you in this program. And we hope you get a chance to fill that out even further on the sixth floor. We're gonna try to keep this to a time limit that will allow you to see the exhibition either again or for the first time after the program, but um, the library does close at eight, so we'll, we'll see. Um, I'm gonna try to answer a couple of questions that have been coming up when I introduce this project to people. Um, this is a book, it's an exhibition, and this is a reading. Um, <laughs> and it is a collaboration. So Kim Shuck and I um, put together this project that we were parallelly working on uh, in our own spheres during the pandemic. This is the intro panel to our exhibition. It gives you some of the information about the show and what we were doing. But this is pandemic poetry 
and what I like to call stripal distancing collage work. Um, actually, Kim was naming her poems quarantine poems. And it was sometime in April 2020 that we were, we had been daily posting on Facebook our work, and we were like, I see you. I see you're doing the same thing that I'm doing. And um, I'm going to read a little bit of an exchange from the 3rd of April 2020, where Kim wrote to me and said, I had a dream that we did a poetry slash art book together. Think about it. And I was like, ooh, I like that idea a lot. And when someone like Kim Shuck, who has the kind of presence and into it that she has in the world, says she had a dream about something, you pay attention. So um, when I said I liked it, she's like, cool. And I was like, are you thinking of pulling together your quarantine poetry? And she said, does that sound like something you'd want to respond to? I like the stripes. So. Um, my work incorporates a lot of stripes. And we are both weavers. So she acknowledged it's very weaverly, if you know what I mean. So um, the Arts Commission has graciously um, funded this project. Um, it's not very often you get to be paid in advance to be an artist or a poet. A lot of times you like, pull stuff together just kind of in your studio and in the recesses of your home or wherever you are working. And then you hope someday, somewhere, someone will maybe want to buy what you did in this kind of weird purchase arrangement for creativity. Um, but we got paid in advance. Well, we had been working during the quarantine, but in December of 2021, we applied for this grant, 2020. And in, in January 2021, we um, were granted this artist grant. It was actually Kim's artist grant. I'm the collaborating artist. Um, and uh, there's a couple um, things to say about this book. Here's the back and front cover. We had the honor of being blurbed by three former and current former poet laureates um, of surrounding towns, all really strong women poets. Um, and our book that you'll get to see after we speak, after P Kim speaks, um, is it's not an illustrated volume of poetry. So like I didn't make my poems to respond to Kim's words. We were creating, like I said, in a parallel way. So this is really about resonance. And both of our work stands alone, but there's a way that the resonance makes it an even deeper experience to read and see the imagery. And I think this book really highlights the deep dive you can have of daily practice. For me as an artist, what it meant during the pandemic, also I was recovering from kind of deep heartbreak at the time, to have created something small, beautiful, and completed at the start of each day was really grounding. And both Kim and I worked in the morning. That was our morning. Uh, ritual, morning practice, morning creation. So um, the themes you see kind of evoke that, as one person said, sort of the dream space of that morning time. Um, and uh, so here's a view of the book. And we want to thank Paul Corman Roberts here in the front row for book layout and design. The exhibition staff here in this building are incredible. So Joan, Hannah, Jesse really made our work come together in such a beautiful way. And then the book was printed by Piedmont Copy and Printing, and they worked on every little detail with me. I tell you, I really recommend them if you have anything you need to print. So um, we're going to move into just pure images while Kim reads. But I, I do want to say that um, our work is also meant to, even though it was created during 2020 and then deliberately in 2021 as part of this grant when we thought we would be responding to the pandemic, but we were still in it. Um, this meant is, is also meant to respond to this moment, which is our emergence and how are we transforming through that deep internalized trauma that we all experienced collectively, but really alone. Um, how do we come to grips with it? How do we get healing out of it? And so hopefully 
our book, our exhibition, the poetry, the words, the imagery can help move us all a little further along that road of recovery and um, emergence. So, Kim. This is the point where I usually say that it's always an honor to read in Ramatush territory, but that's not gonna cut it this time because the way that we've worked on the poems and the images really responded to what we were seeing. And at the time we lived across the freeway from one another. And so we were looking at the same birds and we were looking at the same weather and we were looking at things that were in this environment, an environment to which we are guests. And I just really cannot thank the people of this place or the place itself sufficiently for not just these poems, but really everything I've ever written because I was born and raised here and I'm really um, connected to this place. Oh, that's exciting. <laughs> you ever find things on your glasses that you have no idea where they came from or what they are in fact? Whatever it was, it's gone now. So I'm gonna read a few of these. We're definitely, definitely gonna keep this <coughs> reading portion kind of short. And then um, um, have time to field some questions maybe and let you see the book live. They're really gorgeous. And I have to say something else. I was a little concerned and I've been carrying one around in my purse in a Ziploc bag. <laughs> but other people handled it a bunch. And it's really stood up. Just have to say I was, I was, you know, you birth these things and then they're just very precious. Smoke of burning houses, bitter blessing smoke. And somewhere on this hill, dogs howling, howling. I watch houses tumble into living water off east where the sun comes from. More prayer, more wind, more flood dogs, fire dogs howling. I pull my hill around me tight, tight like unburst blossom and repeat my name to myself. It sounds so like this hill. Take me to rain and let my parched body take deep, wet breaths, be dissolved. Today's early light is fixed on my thirsty left eye. I crackle, I spark, I catch fire. We bring our old water songs to edges. We are the instruments, our dry, our dry thoughts, our dry and folded thoughts crack the word for rain. Building water from first principles, we've called the bones, called a song another song. Ravens from up the hill drop pieces of evergreen, arrange the joyful things in every corner. This is the cautious edge. We stand where the redwoods were, where the roots spoke one and another. And as the singing begins, our neighbor child sends soap bubbles up the street. The rain wind, the rain wind winds along the twisting ways. Prayers offered to a bowl of tap water then given on to the tree roots, an acorn in my pocket so I don't lose my way, a way through. Can you make yourself strong enough to change? We are shape-shifting now. Can you feel bone flow, thoughts like rivers drawing new beds, like obsolete roadways, feeling for a way through? We are the cure, not one tree split grounding, one clean thought. But all of our messy meander, our beautiful, impatient care. Wake again, pull self out of idea of self, the mechanics of it, the dream awake of it. The tea bath poem, the laundry puzzle broom, 
another ritual of a day, and the chewing reality of pandemic, which is and isn't crawling the corners of my kitchen. Before noon, grateful, basking in the drizzle, cellular memories of being aquatic. Ground floor air hanging thick with sun warm apple puzzle day, this shifting, this fruiting, this year song. I read your poem, the wind, the collage, and think these things, I want to know them. I want to feel the hum of the hive, the curve of the number, the wind blown through your reframed heart. I want to feel the damage corrected. I want to live in a community deeper than a one-liner. There's one poem in here that is so deeply creepy, I'm not going to read it. <laughs> Eventually. You can find that one in the book yourself. Um, <laughs> these houses may have come adrift, unhooked, run off with rumors painted gray in a city that used to whisper daisy crowns, rethought, a city that sang California, that poemed wild hearts painted like an angry ocean, not this loving nesting water that surrounds us. The household membrane. So aware these days of place where outdoor changes to indoor. That piece of wood, I rest a shell there, a piece of charcoal to heat the resin smoke, right there at a place like the sun coming up, a transition, a hidden prayer, a welcome, waiting for when welcome returns. Up the hill, houses belong to those century plants. Dawn pulls pink out of the beige. I crochet another skull, a snake, ask the plague ghosts what they remember, finally have a good talk with the great grandma, dead in the 1918 from flu, revisit smallpox scars, still visible, still visible in the family anxieties, if not on our skin, yellow fever, cholera that visited my childhood in grandpa's curses, polio, the librarian's hands across the street, the house sparrows tucked in under the roof tiles, just out of the window, a fern frond uncoiling in a slow gesture, my nose pressed to glass, wrapped in a cloak of ravens in history. The neighborhood owl has some things to say. Tying another button to the string, I stand on the porch, rain wet. Street sings back. Today has a different geometry, just now a fullness with Nolo's pumpkin bread and owl company, untranslated stories, narratives from the various centers, tying this button, a particular spell, to this string of buttons. It's all out there, mistranslated and sequestered, Uncured and unwary, sealed box stories, transformations of water, of fire, the owl wings you can't hear but can guess at, with enough experience you can guess. I have worn cold iron. I have worn cold iron on a morning like this. Bodies, relentlessly symbolized. Where does a transformation take place? Rain becomes underground water, another cosmetic surgery, cellular engines on loan to the cooperative organism. Where is transmutation catalyzed? Constant fuss of change. I looked into her eyes and remembered life isn't always change. A press of water moving, water underground, water thinking itself into cracks and ever exploration, rainfall. There is an ache in my jaw for the slow, hot, flawed pour of a different season. I can feel the close miss, can hear the bullets, and I'm not a bystander. The damned twist in torture of their own devising and make their plans as accurate as their shots. For now, for now, 
the floor sings warning, the prayers, sinews stretching, I will hold my place, hold the people whole in my words. <clears throat> the bearded iris are coming out in floating whites, in songs of purple, I can't hug my son who lives two hills north of here. I sweep the kitchen floor and scrum away boot scuffs, pasta marks, something anonymous and sticky, and I call my parents to check in. Two-hour poetry reading online, a good cause, a good lineup, a great audience, and every recent ceremony missed, all of the way we mark the edges because this is our job, taking care, keeping safe. I believe in my job, but today I absolutely hate it. The cells light up early down by the old waterfront, blocks from the water now. The city eats itself, but it uses fancy condiments. Office become cubicle, home become investment, ice cube tray living. Plenty of the housed are homeless, a knife slipped right in under the sternum like external bleeding, shelter in a place where the place is a stone in the river, not a bridge, not a refuge, and the city calls out community. Where are we in that death of a thousand cuts? Mythological creature, we are held together with running stitches and a stone tossed as a wish into water, a spell, a stone in the rapids, a toehold. One afternoon at the Old Star Pharmacy, Baron Semedi and Rabbit were one after the other in line for the checkout. The Baron danced gently to vague and unstructured shopping music, and Rabbit chuckled. The night before quarantine, we shared art at the kitchen table. Noodles may save us all. What are you doing to keep yourself alive today? What are you doing in the hour of the war god? The Baron and I dance to vague music. I can hear Rabbit now renaming the daily ritual designations. I can hear him. He knows we need to try something new. And here is where it must start. The rearticulation of the skeleton, just the collecting of the phalanges will take some time. Yes, from the bones out, as though we meant it. Rinse the fear from our marrow, from dermis and spinal cord. Take with us, eventually, an understanding of the connections. My bones need ache of coming rain in October are used to this place. A few generations in gathering moon, soon over the water tower, gathering moon seen through rain, soon a song in my cells, a song in silver light and set fruit, set fruit going orange, orange for speaking through the membrane, life, death. We are spirit and ache. We are a calling thing here at the harvest. month of flowers, and as the moon rises, deep quiet takes the same path as summer fog. Bay to ocean. These lessons in holding breath, holding in, month of flowers, and here in pools of deep quiet, moon singing. These whirlpools, these kissed and silenced incantations, and finally I catch her, the moon, reflected in the water of my footed cast iron pot. I have added chamomile flowers picked from sidewalk cracks. Earth's nictating membrane extends, retracts like the April fog. A spell of gratitude starts here. Gadugi, mutuality, the only solution. Each drummer, each dancer, each piece of the ceremony aligns the circle dances down the grass, brings healing, resists conformity, holds the spaces between, balance, balance and stay well. The wind has dropped. What bridge are we standing under? What bridge, what measure? I rest my forehead against a load-bearing wall and safe, I breathe deep. 
The dowser's headache is back. So much water, and I can feel all of it. Unfold your best healing dance. The poison of centuries collected in wise toes calls for release. Dress carefully. Coil all of your medicine around you, those heel-worn angers and grandma's best earrings, mom's recipe for bell pepper and ginger. Weave the dried flowers of a lifetime into your hair. Call them all to circle the cars, to bring the rattles where the headlights cross, stand, breathe, and dance the deep healing. We give each other hands full of words, sticky, smelling of jacks or bread yeast. We give each other heart words, words the taste of stew, beans, sharply of coffee. We splint the brakes with words, pull the boat, bolt from the white wall with words, draw the fever with words. We stand by the bedside all night, breathing words and more words. We are relentless. Listen to the crickets and tell you the temperature. Look at the stars to track pathways. Call the houses by names of who lived there years gone. The politicians are trapped between dates on the pages of books. But we sing the world end to end and hand each other another word. I think this is going to be my last poem. <coughs> this South Hills fog is a gift from the Pacific to the Bay. Relabeled body parts sneaking inland, painted with Delta mud, seeking the things they came here for. The petroglyphs, the bear dance healing that somewhat translated out of utility by someone who looks like them and knows the order of forks and the rituals of somewhere else. But the bay takes it neat, sipped right from the rocks, not cut with romance or the dream of wilderness, but clean as the red tails kill, clean as an afternoon talking story. And the Pacific sends the bay fog to remind her that she's part of something that she loved. Thank you so much for being here. <clears throat> yeah, does anybody have any questions? <laughs> I have just battered you into submission. Do you have questions? <laughs> yes, Jonathan. Can you talk a little bit about how the poems and the pieces are pieces for care? <laughs> Yeah, but we should say in advance, our, for this purpose, um, what we were showing you on the screen are not necessarily the pairings that we decided on for the book or the exhibition. Um, but I'll let you talk about it, and I'll see if there's more I want to say. We kind of went back and forth on it. So initially, I think it was, um, we looked at them by date. And some of that made sense, and some of it didn't. And we sat with it for a while. And then I think you went through first and shifted some things around. Um, and then we sat around the kitchen table. And we sat around the kitchen table and put them all out and sort of paired them up that way. And then we decided we didn't like some of those. We adjusted that. But it was a really organic process. Um, I think some of them are still with in same date pairings, but most of them are not. We fiddled with it and played with it like cards until we liked what we saw. And some of them um, really just spoke to us through a phrase in Kim's poetry that related to either some words or um, shapes or like this image, for example, kind of evokes kitchen wallpaper. So when Kim is talking about the creaking floorboards or being in the kitchen, this is sort of the one that spoke to me around that. Um, in our second iteration, so we did about 90 uh, poems individually, collages individually in 2020 until we were like September, October, okay, I think 
we're done with that. And then when we applied for the grant, we said we were going to do daily poetry in 2021. So there was a little bit more deliberate, I see what your word imagery is. I'm going to riff on that. With That was more intentional, mm -hmm. for sure. But... So it didn't always pair up exactly that way either. No, it didn't. And quite frequently, they'd slip a day. So the ones that went together was one from one day and one from the next day, right? But I write every day. So I wrote a poem every day for both years. It's just some of it wasn't mutually resonant enough to actually look at. And there was also a size concern because I did not want any poem to slop over to the next page. And usually that's really achievable for me, but I kind of went into this realm of verbosity at one point where things were all three pages long. There was a just... lot happening in 2020, sort of mid-year to fall. Yeah. Yeah. A lot to say. And it was, um, yeah. And I had started a project for the library at that point, which was called Poem of the Day. And I was putting up a poem every day and I was getting really sad because there was a couple of months where I'd post somebody's work and there was like one person each week who died like within a little period. I was feeling cursed a little bit and then I never thought of myself as a memorial poet but I certainly became one in 2020 and 2021. Like Jack. And like, well, it, it yeah. started with Michael McClure. Mm. McClure passed away, and I think the first poem in the project is my memorial poem to McClure. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it just uh, it became really depressing writing poetic obituary commentary for my <laughs> friends or people that I respected, but mostly they were my friends. Also, I have to say, if you're ever tempted to create a poem of the day situation for anything, Get a backup of about three months because we pulled it off, but I was sending Michelle Jeffers a poem sometimes on the morning. It had to go up. Like, can we sneak this in here? <laughs> you know. And because of that project, it's actually an honor for us to be here showing our work at the library because of the depth of connection and uh, service you have to this place through that particular uh, project and many, many others, the Poem Jam included. So Yeah, well, that all happened because of the laureate thing. But um, right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Seventh Poet Laureate, if you didn't know that already. <laughs> I forget that people don't know it, and sometimes I forget that was true. There might be some people here that might not know that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, are there other questions so we don't just kind of go off? Yes. Oh, thank you so much. Um, I have a couple questions, if that's okay. So you said that you were afraid of the words slopping over to the next page. Does that mean you knew what size of the book you were already going to make? Good and then question. my paired question is like, I am unfamiliar with the collage work. What is the size that you're working on here? Because I'm assuming the book's small. This is big. What can you just help us out with? Mm -hmm. okay. They're three by five. Okay. Um, and the book rep reproduces them at roughly the right size. Um, but it's a really good question. And if you go to the sixth floor exhibition, you'll see the originals um, and they're small. So this is, it's kind of weird to see them blown up like this. In terms of the book size, Kim, you want to speak to that? In terms of the book size, I've developed this really specific and persnickety notion of the size, the correct size of a book of poetry. I'm not sure where it came from, and it's likely to change. But I want it to conveniently fit into the pocket on this coat, <laughs> which, as you can see, it does. This is the um, standard measure. <laughs> Kim's, Kim's pocket. Coat. <laughs> Kim's coat pocket. So yeah, we knew we were going to do a five by seven roughly book. Um, and you know, you could make the type really small for a long poem, but we also wanted it to be legible. So that did um, influence our choices a little bit. Yeah. And there's about 40, 44 um, poems and uh, poem pairing and collage pairing together in the book, plus the cover images. 
And I just want to speak about this real quick. The cover, um, let's maybe go back. I'll go back um, to show you the cover big. But so when Kim wrote me this message, um, let's do a, let's think about doing a book. I was, I took the opportunity to um, read back through everything she had written, which by that time was only three weeks. So it felt like a lot at the time. When we ended, there were, you know, we each did about 150 pieces towards this project, even though we were both still creating daily. Um, but these pieces were really um, about our corners that we were all stuck in. And it, they were, they're individual pieces, but they're meant to work together. And they also can be shifted around so that the pieces come together and there's something in the center instead of on the edges. Um, but a lot of the images, she talks about cats a lot, we the urban sort of landscape. Um, there's a lot of resonance for actual Kim phrases in the imagery here, or at least that I was working with that. So these were deliberate. Um, and I remember sending them to her. We were like, I think, I think we're onto something now. Um, so this was a definite response kind of project, this particular set. Yeah. I think when I initially asked Eileen Casanetto to blurb the book, she was the current poet laureate of San Mateo County, but which is, you know, the way my brain works. I'm looking at this, so I'm having a random thought. I apologize for the random thought. Oh, well, those are pretty powerful poets up there, too. They all are really remarkable for all kinds of reasons, and it was a blessing that they all said yes, and they they hopped on that quite quickly, so. Um, also, I want to point out, you won't be able to see this until you come over and look at the books, but um, we knew we wanted to do hand binding on this book, and I'm a book binder, um, kind of more amateur than anything else. If you go upstairs to the sixth floor and see our show, you'll also see really professional, meticulous book binders who make books like you would see in somebody's wood paneled library. Um, but this has a long stitch binding, so we had it all printed up in signatures, and then I bound them and then took them back to the printer and they cut them down to size. So this is, um, they've all been held lovingly um, and sewn up, and it should lie flat and be do all the things that a hand-bound book should do. The first uh, incarnation of the project um, as a final piece, like as a book piece, as opposed to the show piece or um, the poetry reading piece, was um, had a lot more poems. It was like that big. Well, it it was, still is. It was that big. It was that big because we had the original art pieces on every page, that so too. it. it ballooned up, but we, we did take a whole signature out. We took out, a bunch yeah. of them out. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think uh, Paul Corman Roberts is an excellent teacher of how to create, like how to th think about a manuscript and how to write poetry. And he's always saying that um, great poems are made by editing, which is something I don't really do. But instead, we we edited the poems. We took actual poems out instead of taking words out. And I think that worked pretty well. Anybody else have questions? Other questions? <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> yes. Yes. What did it make you want to do next? What did it make you want to do next? Well, the daily practice for me has been about creating this book. So I, I actually want to get back to an artistic, creative process in the mornings. Um, kind of given that to the birds, I, that's my, the time I spend with the birds in the morning. But um, maybe after the birds, I'd like to go back to having something beautiful and small that I can take into the world for each day. I still write every day. Um, a thing I do. Um, what else happened? So it transitioned into writing an essay every day for uh, um, a differently kind of published book that is out now called Noodle Rant Tangent. And 
Um, I the there is a certain joy of distanced collaboration, of collaboration that's not locked together. And I want to try that with some other people, but I need a break first. So that's, I have plenty of stuff going at all times. Sorry. Oh yeah, we don't want to cut you off. Where um, you can um, match up your, our own Ooh, your puzzle own and, and with whatever Ooh. poem we, what a cool idea. You know, so we're going to be up in that gallery until February, and we do maybe want to do another event, maybe an interactive type thing, but maybe that's part of it. Maybe, maybe that's Maybe we create a little digital puzzle making. That sounds fun. That sounds vaguely unsatisfying, though, digitally. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of like eating a caramel with the wrapper on digitally. <laughs> Let me think about that. Yeah, I, I got to be honest with you. If I find an old caramel in the purse that I cannot detach the label from the thing from, I eat it anyway. Um, which is probably visually something you can tell about me. Um, anyway, we're going to set up the books, and if you have any further questions, I'm going to be available to answer them as soon as I. Pop a <coughs> cough drop and put my mask back on. And yeah, also, again, the library is open till eight. So if you don't need to purchase a book but want to go to the exhibition, it's there for you. Thanks for coming. Thank you.